Sutukuri mama mama masikari anda. Re baba baba baso kote tete ke maranda na masita. Re baba baba sukuta masi andere beshi kariata. Mari andere beshi kariata. Mahande beshi sukuri anda. Mashi kete mesia tata kama sukuri anda. Re ba sukute ne ne beshi kariata na ba sukuta na na mahaya na. You are worthy to be praised, my master. You are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy. Mighty men of four, lion of Judah, Reba Baba 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 Bashikarianda, Rete Kama Mashikarianda, Reba Baba Baba Bashikarianda, Reba Baba Baba Bashikarianda, Reba Baba Bashikarianda, Reba Baba 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 Bashikarianda, Reba 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 Baba Bashikarianda, you are worthy, Lord, to receive the glory. You are worthy, you are worthy, my master. Reba baba basi karianda raba si kirieta. Reba baba baba shekete masi karianda raba suta. Mande debe shikarianda raba suta raba sienda. Reba baba baba su kurienda raba sieta. Marianda raba shikirieta. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We honor your name. We honor your name. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. When you are down, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. When you are done, Lord, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Oh, Jesus, take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. When you are done, Lord, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Oh, we need more of you, Lord. We need more of you this afternoon, Lord. Take the stage. Take the stage. Less of me and more of you, Lord. Less of me and more of you, my master. Take the stage. Take the stage, Jehovah. This afternoon, take the stage in our hearts, oh God. Take the stage in our families, in things that we value. Take the stage, oh God. We crown you today with many crowns, oh God. Take the stage, oh God. Take the stage this afternoon, oh God. We lay our lives before you. We lay our lives before you, Lord. Take the stage, Jehovah, take the stage. You are dethroning kingdoms this morning, God. You are rearranging destinies, oh God. You are touching lives this morning, oh God. Our lives will never be the same, oh God. Every time you send a word, our lives are changed because just one word from you, oh God, just one word from you, oh, it changes our lives 
one word. What we need is a word from you, oh God. We have had so many words, but this afternoon we need a word from you. We need a word. We are disparate for you, oh God. As the deer pants for the water, we hunger, we thirst for you, Lord. Take the stage, take the stage this afternoon, oh God. Take the stage. You are the one on the throne. You are the one in control this afternoon. We are totally submitted to you, God. We are totally submitted to your will. We want to see your kingdom coming this morning. We want to see your will be done in our lives, oh God. Take the stage. Take the stage, my master, take the stage. Take the stage, oh God, take the stage. You are the king of kings, take the stage. You are the one in control. Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. We worship you. We worship you, Lion of Judah. We give you praise. King of Zion, we give you praise. King of Zion, we give you praise. Oh, Yandara Basita, rain, rain, rain this morning in our lives. Be glorified, be glorified. Take the stage, oh Master, take the stage. Oh, Yandara Basita, Riba Baba Basukuri, Yandara Basikariet. Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior. You are great in battle. We worship you, we worship you, we exalt you. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy, my master. You are holy, you are holy. You are holy, my God. You are holy. The Bible says the angels, they worship him and say, you are holy. And the word holy in Hebrew is the word kadosh. And the direct meaning of the word kadosh, it is different meaning that every time the angels when they say you are holy they don't mean that they see the same glimpse from God they say that what I saw a few minutes ago it is different from what I'm seeing and this this afternoon we want to say God you are holy God is progressively revealing himself in our lives can you please join me as we say you are holy you are holy. What we saw yesterday is different. How we experienced you, Lord, it is totally different. You are holy. You are holy, like angels singing and saying, you are holy, you are holy, Lord. We cannot compare you to anybody else. We give you glory, we give you glory, we give you glory, Master. You are holy, you are holy, Lord, you are holy. You deserve our worship, this is our worship. This is our praise, this is our praise. Nobody will do it for us. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Sitting on the throne, you reign. You reign, God. You are in control of our destiny. You are the one in control of our future. Because you live, we can face tomorrow, God. We worship you, King. We worship you. We worship you, Lion of Judah. We give you praise. I just want to greet you all in the name of Jesus. I just want to greet the leadership for Esther position. May God richly bless you in Jesus name. This morning, I just want to share the word of God from the title, it is your season to be fruitful. It is your season to be fruitful. Anybody who is hearing this word, I want you to personalize this word and say, it is my season to be fruitful. It is your season. If you're just listening to this word, 
It is your season to be fruitful. It is your time to be fruitful. It is your time to be productive. I don't care the circumstances that you are going through. This afternoon, I came with a word from God to say it is a season to be fruitful. It is a season to be fruitful in your body. It is a season to be fruitful in the works of your hands. It is a season to be fruitful in the ministry that God has called you. In anything that God has entrusted you with, it is a season to be fruitful. Please receive this word this afternoon. It is your season to be fruitful. The verse that we, where we took our, our theme today is from the book of Genesis chapter 41, verse 51 to 53. Verse 51, Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh. And he said, it is because God made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. And verse 52, it says, the second son, he named him Ephraim and said, it is because God made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Hence, this thing that we have, the season of fruitfulness. It is a season to be fruitful. Today, I have come to declare a new season upon your life. For many of us, we are recovering from loss. We all have experienced loss from different levels, some at a personal level and some as a family and some at a corporate level as a church. But this afternoon, I have come to say that it is your season to be fruitful. But it just is the south of Issachar. We need to understand what God is doing in this season. The Bible says they knew the times. Not only did they know the times, they knew what to do during those times. Hallelujah. And as the children of God, if we know what God is doing and saying in this season, we will know how to reciprocate. We will know what to do in this season. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes it may feel like God is doing nothing. There are times where it feels like you cannot feel God moving in your life. But those who are divinely connected to, the, to God in the spirit, they know that he is working things out. Even when they don't see anything in the unseen realm, God is doing something. Glory to Jesus. Especially in this season, God is working in unusual circumstances. This afternoon, I would like you to prayerfully follow the word that God has given me. Please follow as I share the heart of God. The story of, that we read is about the, the young man called Joseph. But I want to bring the background to the whole story so that you understand how did we get to the point where he is saying, God made me to be fruitful. In the book of Genesis chapter 41, where we got our theme, we read the story of a young man called Joseph. The Bible is teaching us that he was a favorite of his father. Not only that, but he had a dream. At a tender age, God had shown him his position and authority that he carried in the spirit. And he used to dream of himself being in a position of authority, having favor above his brothers. At a tender age of 17, he had a glimpse of what the future would look like. Hallelujah. You know, as a young man, he got excited about what God was revealing to him about his future. His young and pure mind, it did not desire that the dream that he had, it was not for public consumption. Glory to Jesus. 
For Joseph, what was meant to be a source of excitement, it turned out to be a source of contempt from his brother when he was sharing the dream. The Bible says every time he would bring his brother's food, they will say amongst the, themselves, there comes a dreamer. I want you to follow me closely this afternoon, child of God, as we explore the journey of Joseph. And not only follow me, find yourself in the story. Glory to Jesus. Many of us, we find ourselves in similar predicament because many of us have prematurely shared that which God has laid in our hearts. You see, dreams, they are like pregnancy. They are not to be shared prematurely. We learn in the word of God about Mary and Elizabeth. They were the first cousins, very close in relation. The Bible says that Mary was three months pregnant and Elizabeth was six months pregnant, but they did not share with each other that they were pregnant until when they met and the children lived in their tummies. In those days, it was believed that the fetus is at the most vulnerable at the first trimester. Therefore, as a woman, you need to guard this development so tight. Child of God, I came to encourage you this afternoon. Do not allow excitement and familiarity cause you to expose your dreams prematurely. Hallelujah. Do not allow familiarity and excitement cause you to share the dream that God has given you prematurely. Glory to Jesus. Some of us, our dreams have been aborted because we shared them with those who harbored the spirit of jealousy. Some of your dreams and your plans, they were stolen because before they manifested, you started sharing them with other people who were not meant to be part of the puzzle. Glory to Jesus. But this afternoon, I pray that God will restore you. As we progress, we learn that Joseph was later sold to the, to the media who later sold him to the Egyptians. You see, his life was reduced to just a commodity. He was sold. And later on, we understand that he was in Egypt. He lived in Egypt, where he was now a refugee. And later on, he became a prisoner. But there is one thing that I love about his life. The Bible says that the favor of God the grace of God, it remained upon his life. And he continued, God continued to show himself great on his behalf. Glory to Jesus. If you read Genesis 41, when Joseph was, was promoted in prison, the Bible says he was promoted from a place of humiliation to a life of dominance. Hallelujah. The purpose and the grace of God upon Joseph, it could not lie dominant. It didn't matter he was in Egypt. It didn't matter that he was in prison. But the purpose of God, wherever he was, it could not lie dominant. God navigated circumstances that will work for Joseph right in prison. An unusual place to prosper. But God did it for Joseph. The Bible says that Pharaoh had a dream, but he could not find somebody who could interpret it. But the spirit of God, the grace that was upon Joseph, hallelujah, made him to be able to interpret this dream to Pharaoh. And the Bible says, Pharaoh said to Joseph, in as much as God has shown you all this, 
There is no one as designing as and wise as you. Glory to Jesus. Even Pharaoh testified that Joseph was carrying a different spirit. He said that nobody is as wise and designing as you. And I want to tell you, child of God, with the grace that is upon your life, you carry a different spirit like Joseph. Glory to Jesus. The grace of God upon Joseph was the type that thrives in difficult situations. He carried upon himself the type of grace that bounces back. When the enemy thinks that your life is over, you bounce back. That's the type of grace that was upon the life of Joseph. Hallelujah. The type of grace that was upon him, it is the type that caused him to, to excel in uncommon circumstances. The type that is able to stand in the face of a resistance and you see a promotion. This is the type of grace that demands a response from any environment. Glory to Jesus. When he was in prison, he was promoted to be a second in command in Egypt. This promotion was just not an ordinary promotion, but it came with some benefits. Just like you, child of God, the grace that you carry upon your life is not common. It is not ordinary. Hallelujah. Joseph had no family. He had no friends. But one thing we are sure about is God was on his side. You see, with God on your side, you are a majority. With God on your side, child of God, you are a majority. Joseph had no prayer partner. He didn't have somebody to confide his feelings. And considering the age he went to Egypt, he had suffered so much loss. But God remains on his side. And I want to remind you, child of God, the, the state where you are, the place where you are, God is still on your side. Even when you cannot hear him, even when you don't see him, when you cannot praise him, he is still on your side. Oh, yeah, that I'm a Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. He is on your side, child of God. God is still on your side. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes God allows you to be rejected so that when you finally make it, when you finally have your breakthrough, it's only him who is going to receive the cloth. Nobody is going to claim that they did it for you, but only God receives the cloth. Hallelujah. Many of you, like Joseph, you are facing re rejection and resistance where you are. It might be in a place of, or in your workplace. It might be in your ministry. You are sure that God has called you, but you are facing so much resistance. You are facing so much rejection. But I came today to say, child of God, you are still in the plan of God. You are still within the plan of God, and God is on your side. Hallelujah. As we progress about the life of Joseph, we read from the book of Genesis chapter 47. The Bible says here that Joseph was later reunited with his family due to famine. I will not dwell much on this because it's a message on its own. But he was, his, his family later came to Egypt due to famine. They were not aware that he is still alive. But famine, you remember when we started, Joseph used to give them food. Instead, they used to mock him and say that he was a dreamer. But the very thing 
they reject it. The food he used to bring for them, it is the very thing now they are going around looking for supply of food. And guess who is going to answer to their needs? It was Joseph. Glory to Jesus. Beware how you treat each others. Look at how you treat people, child of God. Because the very person we might be rejecting today might be the very person who has got the answer to our needs. And if we have the mindset of the mindset of looking down on others, we are going to miss out what God is doing in this season. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when they arrived in Egypt, the family of Joseph, when they arrived in Egypt, they were allocated a place at the border of Egypt, near the promised land. It is said that the place they were allocated, they were able to see the promised land. And the place was called Goshen, G-O-S-H-E-N. The Bible says Joseph's family, they were allocated this place. I want to remind us that they were not an ordinary people. They were the Israelites, a covenant people, people who had a covenant with God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says right within Egypt, they were allocated because of the favor that was upon Joseph. They were allocated a land called, jo a land called Goshen. According to the Bible, it was a rich land. The Egyptians, they didn't give them because it was rich. They just allocated for them. But because of the direction and the guidance of God, it was the right land for them. Hallelujah. It was a land suitable for farming. If you read verse 21, the Bible says, even in Goshen, the Lord prospered the children of Israel. And the Bible says, they grew in number. When the enemy was attacking, then they were growing in number. I want you to know a few things about the land of Goshen. If you read in the book of Exodus chapter 8 verse 22, we learn so much about the plagues that were upon Egypt. The Bible says during the fourth plague, fourth plague in Egypt, God says, hallelujah, in the book of Exodus chapter 8, verse 22, God says, but on that day, I will give special treatment to the land of Goshen. Why Goshen? Because the people of God who had a covenant with their God were living there. Remember, this land is still within the parameters of Egypt. Hallelujah. But God is saying on that day, when the plague came, God said, I will give a special treatment to the lands of Goshen, where my people live. No swarms of fly will be found there. In this way, you will know that I, the Lord, I am in the land. Child of God, I came to remind you that the Lord is within you. Wherever you are, they were in Egypt. The postcode was still Egypt. But just a place where they are, just a small allocated plot where they are, God said that I'm going to give them a special treatment. I like another, another version. It says that I will give a preferential treatment to my people. This is God saying during a, a, a time of calamity, he says, where my people are, just a small land, I'm going to give them a preferential treatment, a special treatment. In other versions, the Bible says, God said, I will deal with them differently. Meaning that if God deals with 
the Egyptians. They might get what they deserve because of their cruelty. But when coming to the people of God in Goshen, he says that I'm going to deal with them differently. Because we are a covenant people. The covenant that we have with God, it speaks on our behalf. Hallelujah. It is a covenant of peace. And here the Bible says we get a special treatment from God. Hallelujah. The children of Israel, they were a covenant people. Hallelujah. If things happened to the rest of the population, those things did not happen to them because they had a covenant with God. They were exempted from calamity, why? They were in Goshen, a secret place. Oh, hallelujah. A, a place that the Egyptians overlooked, but they did not know that it was not about the land, but it was about the people who went to the land because they carried with them the type of grace that caused things to work. And I came to, to remind you today, child of God, you are a covenant people. You are a people of God. You are the nation that the Bible says that God is a jealous God. He protects us. Hallelujah. You see, because we are a covenant people, there are things that will destroy everybody else, but not you. You will only be behold with your eyes. We are taught in the Bible about the life of a young man, Daniel. The Bible says that he was put in the den of lions, a covenant person. Hallelujah. You see, lions, they are known that they devolve. With human beings or any other land, they consider themselves the king of the jungle. But the Bible says that here came Daniel in the dead. He was thrown there. Hallelujah. But because of a covenant upon this life, glory to Jesus, because of the promise that God has said that I'm going to deal differently with my people. The Bible says the lions, they did not devour Daniel. Everybody else who was thrown in the death of lions, they were devoured, but not Daniel, because God has made a promise that I am going to give a preferential treatment to my people. Holy and I wish God can open your eyes, child of God, for you to see in the spirit what God is saying when he is saying, I'm going to treat you differently. Here we read about it, the life of Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. They were thrown in the fire but the Bible says that the fire did not consume them because of the people that they were, the kind of people that they were, they were not consumed. There was a preferential treatment. They were excluded from calamity. I want to say to you, child of God, the things that were meant to destroy everybody else, they are going to strengthen you. They are going to work on your behalf because you are a child of a covenant. You see, some people can have all sorts of diseases and you are diagnosed with the same disease. But because God says, I will deal differently with you. You are not going to die, child of God. God will have to freeze the disease in your body. He is going to put a post on your body until you fulfill your purpose. God did not destroy.
like a lion in the lion's bed. But you close their mouth. And today I want to speak prophetically. If there is a situation that seems like lions, that is bringing fear over your life, child of God, I pray that God will close the mouth of the lion. I want to speak to any incurable disease today. The people of God are going to fulfill their purpose. You are not going to progress in their bodies until it is their time from God. I want to declare to you, child of God, you are not going to die prematurely. You will not be overwhelmed by the situation because we are a people with a preferential treatment. Oh, Yarabasukarianda. We are a people of God. We live in a secret place. We live in Goshen. And God has promised to look after us. He is a faithful God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Goshen, a place of provision, a place of favor. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are, child of God, with your life, but I want to speak Goshen in your life, a preferential treatment, different results. Different outcome for your life. Glory to Jesus. I just want to go to a close now to conclude. The, uh, as we followed the life of Joseph, oh, we can ask that all his life, as soon as he got into Egypt, it looked like he was in a foreign land. He was in prison. It looked like the dreams that God has put upon his life, they were dead. But I want to say, child of God, he was promoted in uncommon places. Hallelujah. You see, if Joseph had lived his life thinking that the day I get out of Egypt, at least I'm going to see my realize my dreams. He would have waited for a lifetime. But the promotion, where did it come? It came right in Egypt. He could have waited for a lifetime. But right where he was. He understood that the grace of God, it works in prison and out of prison. It doesn't matter where I am. The calling of God is upon my life and it is demanding the environment to respond to the grace upon my life. You see, the Bible is saying that when the Israelites left Egypt with Moses, the Bible says they carried with them the bones of Joseph, meaning that Joseph spent his lifetime, the best part of his life in Egypt. There isn't any suitable time, child of God, except now. Some of you, you keep on postponing your dreams, thinking that things are going to be better. But the word we read about Joseph, it doesn't say that you are going to get out of that situation. But the Bible says you are going to progress within that situation. Some of you, you put your dreams on hold because you are waiting to be healed. Child of God, it is time to take out the folders. It is time to revisit your dream because we don't know if you are getting out of there. But what we know is that God can promote you where you are now. Oh, Jesus. I came to declare that this is a season to be fruitful against all odds. 
Hallelujah. I'm concluding now. As we have followed the life of Joseph in the book of Genesis chapter 41, verse 51 and 52. This is where we derived our theme for today that it's a season to be fruitful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's your season to be fruitful. Right where you are, in situations that feel like Egypt, it's your season to be fruitful. This is the testimony that Joseph is sharing with his brother. You see, in Egypt, God still blessed him with a family. He had a wife. Oh, hallelujah. And when he's sharing with his brothers, oh, hallelujah. He is sharing this, he's got this testimony to share. He is saying that God blessed me with a son, the firstborn. And he had named this son Manasseh. And he said, it is because God made me to forget all the trouble and all my father's household. He says, because God caused me to forget the pain, the maltreatment, the rejection, the, the, the manipulation of my father's house in my childhood. And he says, my son is called Manasseh. God, God has caused me to forget the pain I went through. And I want to speak this word to you, child of God. God is going to heal you if you allow him to. Every heartbreak, every loss, God is going to heal you as he did for Joseph. That the Bible says that when he testifies, he says, God caused me to forget the pain. Therefore, I call this son Manasseh. And some of you, as you believe this word, you are stepping into a new season where God is, is, is ushering you into a Manasseh season, a season where you are going to forget the pain. You are going to smile. You are going to experience your eyes like God is going to make you to love. Oh, glory to Jesus. If you read verse 52 of, of Genesis chapter 41, then he met his second son, Ephraim. Ephraim. And he said, It is because God made me to be fruitful in the land of my suffering. He named the second son Ephraim. And he said, It is because God caused me to be fruitful in the land of my suffering. Oh, hallelujah. God did not remove Joseph out of Egypt, no. He, he became prosperous, he became fruitful in Egypt. And he's got a testimony that the circumstances didn't need to change. Nothing had to change. God did it despite. With the history that I have, with nobody on my side, God caused me. Oh, glory to Jesus. To be fruitful in the land of my suffering. Some of you are going to pray for the suffering and the pain to be over. But I came to announce a new grace. I came to announce a new season where God is going to show himself in your life right in the midst of your suffering. Right where you feel like things are not working. God is going to cause you to be fruitful. He is going to give me a preferential treatment. The very thing that is used against you, the very thing that looks like a negative quality over your life is the very thing that is going to cause your promotion. And now we've been praying, God, remove this from my life. God, remove this from my life. But what God is doing in this season, 
me. He is not dealing with every situation, but he is causing us to be fruitful as a church in the midst of suffering. In the midst of persecution, when everybody knows your issues, when everybody knows what you're going through, God is going to show up with your life. He is going to cause you to be fruitful. I want you to raise your eyes, child of God. You've been down for too long. The Bible says when everybody says, Hold up a shikha, dear husband, there is a casting down. Then I say there's a lifting up because God is going to cause me to be fruitful in the land of my suffering. The grace of God upon your life. It will cause environment to respond to the grace of God. The grace that is resting upon your child, your life child of God. It is going to break the rules. You, you may not come from the lineage of royalty, but you are going to be like Joseph, that you be a second in command because of the calling, because of the dream, because of the grace of God upon your life. Today, I want to speak to somebody. You've been crying for too long about your childhood pain. You've been crying for too long about your divorce. You've been crying for too long about the suffering. Every other circumstance, we have prayed for too long. But today, I want you to open your heart and receive this word today that God is going to cause you to be fruitful, not in any ordinary situation, but at a place where we can say that it's not going to happen, but God is going to remove all the barriers, all man-made barriers, God is going to remove them. Anything that is standing in the way of God, God is removing the foundations of darkness because you have, you have no choice but to be fruitful. Oh, hallelujah. God is going to cause you to be fruitful. I want you to receive this word today, child of God. God is going to cause you to be fruitful right in the land of suffering, in unordinary circumstances where everything legally is refusing, where everything with all the policies you are trying, but because you are going to get a differential, a special treatment from God, he is going to cause you to be fruitful. Fruitful. Hallelujah. I speak fruitfulness in your life. Isaac, when there was famine, oh, because of the grace upon his life, the Bible says there was famine, but he still, he sowed and reaped a hundredfold. I want to say, child of God, there are global news that are around and uh, the, 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 the reality isolate us as if we don't qualify but i want to say child of god in this environment in the place where we are god is going to cause us to be fruitful hallelujah oh Wherever you are, child of God, I want you to personalize this word. Look at your circumstances. Look at what you're going through. And take this word and say, God, if you did it for Joseph, that he was fruitful in his suffering, give me a testimony. Give me a testimony. Give me a testimony. Let my life move. Let my life progress. In Jesus' name, the God who was on the side of Joseph, it is the same God. Today, I want you to allocate time, child of God, where you are going to pray, where you are going to put a demand on the grace of God, where you are going to put a demand on the anointing and say, I'm going to excel. I'm going to thrive in uncommon circumstances. I'm going to have a testimony because a new season has been declared over your life. It's a season of fruitfulness. It is a season to receive a preferential treatment. 
Anybody who feels that they've been rejected for too long, it was never ever about you. It was never about anybody. It is because God wants to give you a testimony, not with anybody's name, but his name alone. It is a new season, child of God. As I am closing now, receive this word for yourself. Personalize it. We are going to come with testimonies that they, they, they ticked everything negative. They said my income, I don't need the income to a threshold, everything out and you still have the money to buy a house. Some of you, you are going to live longer because God is upon you. Some of you that are testimony, you're going to receive phone calls that are calling you to a place of favor, a place of influence because with you, God is going to give you a preferential treatment. Receive this word today. May God richly bless you. Shalom. Thank you.